But, you know, the, uh, I have, I, I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning to trust Him. Okay? I'm learning to trust Him. And, and, and even, even in my studies, even in my studies this week, I, I was reminded, and I, if I get there, I'll touch on it a little bit. I was reminded of, of how so many times we allow traditions to, to get us locked into a certain way. And, and uh, you know, we, there's, there's stories even, and we'll touch on this as we start talking about Holy Week a little bit. Just, just We're going to run through it real quick. Okay, we're going to run through Holy Week real quick. And, you know, it started with the Lord's Supper. A lot of people call it the Last Supper. Well, it wasn't the Last Supper because He came back. Okay, and they ate again. Amen? All right. So, but, and then, so we have the Lord's Supper. He pointed out in His goodness, in His goodness, He pointed out the one that was going to deceive Him. But yet, nobody recognized don't you find that interesting that, that even though he said, he did, and he fed Judas, nobody recognized that, that he was pointing him out as his deceiver. You know, the, it says the disciples talked about, said, well, maybe they were, he was, since he was handling the money, that they were, he was just sending him off to buy food or, you know, this or that. Judas knew. <laughs> Amen. Okay, and uh, but and I don't want to park on this long, but I just I I think it's important that we understand, you know, because so many times as Christians we tend to puff up and say, well, so and so did it is doing it all wrong, or this is doing that, you know. Oh, look at what look at what he's doing. We'll confront ones of, well, why are, why are you doing this wrong? God pointed it out to ones, but he didn't, he didn't do it in a manner that he was ugly. We have to be careful, Christians. We have to be careful because a lot of times we'll let our flesh get in the way and we'll, we'll decide that we need to tell these folks what they're doing wrong and how they're doing it wrong and, and that... Their way is their their wrongness is the only wrongness that's this around. That oh, I haven't ever done anything wrong. I'm reading the word. I'm well, I'm going to church. I'm doing all this. Got to be careful. Got to be careful. So we learned about the betrayal. Another interesting part of this week is 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 when Judas betrayed Jesus. He brought the Roman soldiers to arrest him. He identified him by going up to him and kissing him. And it's interesting what happened after that is, is Peter got raised and pulled out a sword. I, w I was in a, in a study this week too and it talked about there was only two swords that the disciples even had with them. He grabbed one of them and and slashed off the ear of one of the one of the soldiers. But listen what happened. Jesus stopped Peter, reached down. He healed the wound of that soldier. He healed the wound of that soldier, even knowing what was coming. He had compassion for that. That soldier. <laughs> I've heard I've heard so many this this week has been just full of of tons of stuff. I mean, there, there. If you've been around here or, or knew anything at all, there's just a lot going on this week, especially this weekend. 
This weekend was packed. And I, I just want to give praise to God right now because, because it was a lot of work for a lot of different people to organize everything that took place this weekend. And early, early Friday morning, right at the start of the singing down in the, in the park, a man surrendered to Christ. Making it all worthwhile. That's the only one that I know of for sure that was, was saved this weekend by something that happened this weekend. But if he was the only one, it was worth it all. You know, we think that we've got to fill our buildings up. And yes, we want to fill our buildings up. We think that everybody needs to come to know the Lord. Yes, and everybody does need to come to know the Lord. But even that one, Jesus teaches us in the Word that about leaving the, leaving the flock and going after the one. Amen. You know, it's great when multiples come to come to the, the saving knowledge of Jesus. But it's just as wonderful and the, and the heavens cry out just as loud for that one. Yes. Because that one more soul. Some of you know the Brother Bill. He's been here a few times in, a, in revivals and that's, that's, that's the words of his, his mission is for that one more soul. Just looking for that one more soul. So, Father, I just come to you right now because I need your help with the rest of this. So, so, Father, I just come to you right now and I just give you praise. Father, I thank you so much for your love. I thank you so much for your sacrifice. Father, as we're going to talk about a little bit here, I just thank you for that. Father, it's even hard for me to comprehend, even, even, even believing and knowing as, as, as mightily as I do, it's hard for me still to comprehend the love that you could have for me, for each one of us. That you might send your son. That you might send your son to die for me. That I might live that I might live, that those who believe in you and trust in you might live. I thank you for that. I thank you for that. Oh, God, we give you praise and honor. Father, forgive us when we just sit still and quiet and just take what you've done for granted. Move in the midst of us today, and we give you honor and praise for that in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So, then there was the trial and the crucifixion of Jesus. The trial, and you know, most of you know the story of the different, different ones that the, the chief priest handed them off to Pilate, and they just, nobody, nobody could find wrong with him. And it's interesting that that, you know, when we, when we get looking at it really close is, is what it really boiled down to is the chief priests were getting nervous because Jesus had just entered Jerusalem with the crowds hollering, Hosanna, Hosanna. So the chief priests were starting to get a little nervous that he was getting too big a crowd following him. Churches sometimes... When, 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 when people start going to a different church or something like that, we get a little nervous of, you know, oh, are they taking all the people? Well, forgive us, Father. God will bring the people that need to be here. God will bring the people that he calls here that we might do what he's called us to do, and that's to share the gospel. Amen? So... So here you have the, the Jewish leaders. They're starting to get nervous because of the crowds are starting to follow them. And, and just think about it a little bit because what it is really is, is, is the humanness within them feels their, their power over the people 
and their prestige slipping away because of this man called Jesus. That's why I believe it was so easy for the chief priest to, you know, he, he was able to convince the people to turn against Jesus because first off, as we talked about a few weeks ago, when he entered Jerusalem, everybody thought that he was going to set up his kingdom right then. That, that, was, that was it. It was going to be the end. But then all of a sudden, here he is going on trial, being trialed and convicted of, of crimes that he didn't do and sent to die on a cross. So, because of the people's, I guess it's just, we lose our minds. I mean, I, you know, how easily we forget, right? How easily we forget what God has done for us. Okay? As long as things are going great and, and, and everything's flowing like we think it should, you know, oh, praise God, oh, praise God. Okay? But then all of a sudden there's a hiccup. All of a sudden there's a bump in the road. All of a sudden, oh God, where are you at now? Uh-huh. Okay? How easy is it for to turn ourselves away, turn away from, from where God's leading us? You know, God's leading us into our glory land. But yet, something will happen and we'll, oh, well, maybe I'm not supposed to go there just yet. Maybe he's not the one. Have you ever thought that? I pray, I hope. I hope and pray that, that maybe you haven't, but, but I believe that we all do from time to time reach that point, you know? And it's okay. It's okay to reach that point that we say, God, really? Why? Why, why, are, why am I here all alone? Why am I walking through this? And think about it, he doesn't just say right away, he doesn't say, well, I'm taking to, to the promised land, and this is just one of the, you know. Yeah. Hey, we talked a few weeks ago how the Israelites, they, they wandered, and we went through this, we went through this wander or wandering, okay, and in the desert for 40, day, for 40 years, right? But they never, as, as many times as they got discouraged, and yes, they cried out and they wondered why he wasn't feeding them. They stayed the course because they knew the promise of the promised land. Amen. And he delivered that. Amen. Well, let me try to get back on track here without. Getting... Oh, man. You know, they reached a point that they. They lost sight of what Jesus had taught them. And so, yes, Jesus, for the sins of the world, he went to the cross. He was nailed to a cross. He was crucified. He died on the cross. Now, I want you to listen to this, this and this, this is just an add-on to the sermon, but I saw this in, this, in, in, John, in John 14. Uh, wait a minute, that wasn't it, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, that's somewhere else. It, it, was, it was where he is on the cross, and he says it is finished. Okay, not in John, okay. <laughs> All right. It's, have you ever thought about why he said that? You know, he would, he had just, he had just gone through and we've talked in weeks past and months past of, you know, this is not just a, it's not like your, your cross that you can buy in a store with, with Christ stuck on it, you know, it's, it's not your, it, it was, that was a brutally painful experience. 
Okay? It was not just a light thing. It was brutal. When he said it is finished on the cross, he said it is finished because he had done what the Father had sent him to do. Okay? And, uh, and it's interesting. It, he, some readings will say that, that before he said it's finished that the, that the cloud rolled over and it got dark and the veil was torn. I think I've read in some to where it... And, and you know... In reality, it really doesn't matter the, that particular timing, but the, the fact that when he gave up his soul to the Lord, okay, he said it is finished. He had taken care of all. He had completed everything. He had taken care of everything to cleanse us of our sins, to offer us eternal life. He had done what was supposed to be done he had fulfilled his calling all right he had fulfilled his calling and yes it shook the world it shook the world you know we talked about in when he was entering jerusalem they said if they, if the people didn't cry out hosanna that the rocks would cry out yeah. right The veil was torn. Until that time, if you wanted to get close to God, you had to go before a priest and they had to enter. You had to tell him what you wanted and they had to enter. When that veil was torn from top to bottom, it gave us, it gave us, it gave us the opportunity to come before God Almighty and cry out to Him. To praise him. It is finished. You know, it's interesting. That part, it is finished, comes before the most, the greatest part. You know, I, 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 was, I was with a group Friday and, and the pastor there was, was going through a, 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 a process and he made a statement that day that, I had not really thought about a lot. But after he said it, 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 it caused me to think. He said, you know, if, if Jesus had stopped right there, if Jesus had just died on the cross, our sins were paid for. Okay? If he had, if he had just stopped right there, it is finished. Our sins are covered because of his death. The exciting part is, is he died. They buried him. And what does the word say? In three days. All right. He raised again. He's no longer there. The tomb is empty. You know, People say, well, how do you know that? Well, Scripture talks several times about it. the witnesses. There were several, all of the disciples witnessed him after he was risen again. All right? There's, there's countless Scriptures that talk about that. You know, that's the part. And I think that's the part that made, made me struggle with this so much is I didn't want to do that first part. <laughs> Okay, but it's important that we understand that that was all part of, that was all part of the plan. Okay, all of that was needed. Just like in our lives sometimes there's things that happen in our lives that we don't understand. We can't comprehend. Some things that hurt. But if we're trusting in God and we're, we're, we are following His direction. No matter what we go through, He is big enough. He is big enough. He is powerful enough to walk us through it. We've just got to trust Him. 
We've got to trust him. I, I'm not even going to take time to read it because it would take too long. But, but if you get a chance, read, read, read John 14. <laughs> read John 14. It's a story about how Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. They went to the tomb that first morning and, and it was empty. And they were crying out, where have you taken my Lord? <laughs> and what does it say? Then all of a sudden, she turns, they turn around and there's Jesus standing there. <laughs> you know? I'm no longer there. I'm no longer there. I have risen. Go tell, go tell my disciples that you see me. I told you I have risen as I said I would. I have risen. So what do they do? I mean, you know, isn't this... Okay, there's enough women in here. Though Y'all get excited about it. Isn't it neat that God used the women? Right. All right? right. All right? Hey. <laughs> yeah. You know, when, when Jesus was walking and, and he went by Samaria, isn't it interesting that he used the woman at the well and she went and... and was one of the first evangelists that we ever heard about because she went to the city. She went to the city and she told those about, about Jesus, someone that had told them all about it. And I'm not trying to get you pumped up on your women's stuff, but, but, but it is interesting. You know, the sad part about it is that, that men sometimes were too stubborn. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. But, but you know, okay. It's harder for us to believe, and that's, and that's because it's a lie that's been fed into us over, over years of our life. It's a lie that we're supposed to be this strong, macho, we can't get emotional, we can't do this, you know. And so we think we can't trust anything. Amen. Well, I'm here to tell you, we can trust the Word of God. Amen. And the Word of God said, Jesus died on the cross for you, for me, man, woman. And he raised on the third day. He was resurrected. And that same power that raised him from the dead, when we believe, resides inside us. And so, well, notes. Y'all were really good, but he is risen. Okay? That is a time to celebrate. That is a time to celebrate. Folks, we've been way too long. Way too long have we gotten caught up in this. We're afraid to ex get excited about what the God of the universe that created all things has done for us. And so, the, the guy, son, guy this morning sunrise service said we've got some of these Christians that take the shield and we just kind of hide behind it like like okay the darts are still going to be thrown okay it's time for us it's time for us to, to stand up stand up and allow God to move through us in a way you know for some it'll be get up here and shout for some, it will be just be a smile on, some, on the face of somebody that's coming up to you because they need, they need that today. Sometimes they just need a hug. Sometimes they might need a word. I'm going to tell a quick story. You know, there's Diane and I, when we, first, when we were in the ministry in Texas, we, we worked with a group and, and we learned firsthand that you witness you witness about the goodness of God and sometimes you use words. Sometimes you use words. Okay? It's real easy when we use words if we're, if we're, if we're not really, really there. We'll tend, to, we'll tend to try to feed the people the scriptures that we're not even living out in our own lives. And we're wondering why that they're, I don't want any part of that. 
We need to be seen. We need to be seen as, as individuals that their lives have been changed because of what God has done in our lives. He is, he is the only way. He is the only way. There is only one way. There is only one way to heaven. And that's through the Son. And when we accept that, and we cry out and we surrender our lives to Him, you understand, I didn't say when we ask Him to come into our hearts, okay? But when we surrender to Him, and believe in Him, and that He died for us, and that he rose again. You know, he could have stopped and our sins would have still been forgiven. But what then? It was needed to be completed that he, rise, he rose again. That we might have eternal life. Amen? That we might have promise of, of an eternity with him. Woo! You should get excited about that, yeah? I mean, I mean, really. I don't know about y'all, but my body gets tired sometimes. And I know Mary Lee. Yes, yes. I mean, we get tired sometimes. And man, I just, and there's times that, that there's times we go through stuff and we just say, God, just come take us now. Come on. Come take us now. But he's not done with us yet. He's not done. He's got somebody else that he wants to touch. He's got somebody else's life that he wants to touch, and he needs you to be a part of that. You say, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a, you know. If you've got him living inside you, I'm sorry, folks, but you're a preacher. You not, might not be standing up here sharing the word like me, but you're sharing what God has done in your life. You know, and some of, some of us have, have been in these real highs and then got knocked down. I'm talking, right, sister? Yeah, yeah. And, and it'd be real easy to just stay down there. But we have to trust him. The price that he paid on the cross, it's bigger than that storm. It's bigger than that battle. It's bigger than whatever it might be. If it be a death of a loved one, if it be whatever it might be, my God is bigger than that. He spoke and this universe was created. Uh-huh, uh-huh. He could have, oh man, I wish I'd have, I wish I'd have, I wish I'd, I wish I'd, I wish I'd, I wish I wish the, 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 I like the, the, the context between when Jesus is, is talking to, to Pilate and Pilate says, don't you know that I have the power to send you to crucifixion? And, and he said, remember what he said? He says, he says, you have no power over me unless my father gives it to you. Whew. Let that sink in a minute. Okay. Huh? 1911. Okay. Unless he gave, gave him the power. Pilate had no power over Jesus. Okay. All right. In the same way that that is true, if Jesus lives inside of you, the devil has no power over you unless you give it to him. We have to keep holding on. We have to keep holding on. We have to keep holding on. We have to keep confessing. We have to keep confessing that he is Lord. That he is Lord, the creator of all things. He died for you and for me 
that we might have eternal life. And he has a purpose for our lives. And it's not just to... Sit here and look pretty. Some he calls to preach. Some he calls to go out to the nations and evangelize. Some he calls some he calls to a nursing home, an assisted living home, that you might be a light for any darkness that might be in there. A school. An office. A truck. Whatever it might be, he has a purpose. And all we have to do is, is be obedient to when he says, step, you step. When he says, stop, be silent, we stop, we be silent. Okay? But if he says, speak, we speak. Our whole desire, our whole desire... is to celebrate that he has risen and that, that we be obedient to whatever he tells us to do. And sometimes it's tough. Sometimes it's hard. <laughs> Isn't that right, Diane? <laughs> but you know what? the glory of God and the blessings of God that he just continues to pour out because of obedience. They make up for everything. Make up for everything. Uh, I, you know, if, if there was nothing else, I'm going to read this one thing because I think it's very important. It says that, that I wrote in these notes, I said... It, we have come, we've got to come to the understanding that Christianity is not a system of philosophy, a way of thinking about the world, the universe, or society. Nor is it a ritual, an act of attending church, praying, and singing songs. Nor a code of laws. Following the Ten Commandments is not what makes us a Christian. Being a believer inspires us to follow the Ten Commandments. Okay? It is important. It is the impartation of a divine vitality, strength and active energy. That's what Christianity is about. It's about allowing the spirit that's inside us, the strength, the vitality, the, all of that. It's allowing it to, to just flow. As he says, a rushing river, let it flow. Let it flow. He didn't put this water in us for it to be a, a stale lake. He wanted it to be a rushing river. Okay? <clears throat> Without the way, there is no going. Without the truth, there is no knowing. Without the life, there is no living. It's important. It's important that we do everything we can to understand fully the one, the only way, okay? And all that has been laid out for us. Because he died, we can live, doesn't mean we don't sin, but we can live a sinless life because his blood covers our sins. And that's a whole other sermon we could go into but I, that I won't go into. But, but, but it's, it's important that we understand. Because so many times we think, well, if we're just going to sin anyway, why? Why do we waste all the time of doing all this? Go back to the cross. If, you, if you're there, go back to the cross. Okay? Because the cross is all about true love. 
The cross is empty. The tomb is empty. The most powerful messages of God's love that could ever be done is the empty cross and the empty tomb. Amen? All right. He loved us that much. He loved us that much. He even loved me that much. Well, I just thank God today. I thank God today. It's important that we understand that that he finished what he started. He went to the cross. He finished what he started. He was raised again. So now we have the hope of eternity with him. Okay? And as much as some of us would like to be there now, it's not time. Okay? He's got way more. I think, he, I think it's, it's not just he's got more that he wants to, to use us for. It's more that he wants to bless us through. Okay? Because we find that the, the more we do what he's, he's calling us to do, and we take the steps that he's called us to take, uh, we can, sometimes we don't recognize it. <laughs> just like on a... Sometimes we don't recognize all that he's doing and how good it is until we look back and see all that's done, all that's happened, how he's walked us through a hard time, how he's lifted us back up. He's, he's brought those alongside us to, to, to lift us up. Uh, if, 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 if what I've been talking about today, if for some reason there's somebody in this room, I, I, can't, I, I, I can't go without saying, if, if you don't understand what we've been talking about, talk to us, talk to us, let us, let us, let us pray with you, let us talk to you. We, you know, we're not going to, tell you that you've got to do this we've got to do that we're going to show you in the scriptures and let you determine for yourself what it's saying okay because it's not about it is about what God's done in our lives okay but it's not about them doing exactly how I did it's about doing what God speaks to them through his word okay all right so if you if you're wanted that you're, just, you're not really sure. Oh, what better day. <laughs> what better day than this day of Resurrection Sunday to come to that saving knowledge of Jesus. Surrendering your life to Him. Handing yourself over to Him. Now's the day to do it. Just as we heard this morning, a dear sister, a dear sister, we saw just Thursday, went in for a, for a procedure yesterday and, and didn't come out. Uh, just like we had the young people a few months ago that were having fun driving in a car and, and two of them, two of them died. They didn't get in that car thinking that this is going to be the last my last day on earth we can't we don't know we don't know folks and i i don't say that to be grim or anything but it's just reality we don't know what our next what the next minute's going to bring so we need to make sure now we need to make sure now that we're sure (laughs) of our eternal destination And that if we are sure of that eternal destination, that we celebrate it. That we celebrate it. That's something to be excited about. 
You know, and I know we all get excited in different ways. I've often been accused of that, being kind of calm, soft-spoken. <laughs> My wife tells me I was... I, I, I didn't talk much till after I was ordained, and then all of a sudden it was like he flipped a switch, and I talk all the time, I read more, I just, you know. It's amazing what God will do, right? Well, just praise God. I praise God. I praise God that, that he loved me enough. <laughs> this old, this old, West Texas boy that made my share of mistakes. That I followed him and then I turned away. And I followed him and I turned away. And he was always faithful. Always faithful. Because he knew. He knew. I just was too hard-headed. But boy, I praise God that he, he was patient with me. And I, and I ask his forgiveness every day for not being more, more excited about him than I am. Or at least letting it show. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you praise today. I thank you today. I thank you today for this day. Father, that, that what this day is all about is your resurrection, and I give you praise and glory for that. Thank you that you loved us that much. Thank you that you've prepared the way. You've prepared a place for us as believers. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Oh, and God, we do. We do shout, Hallelujah. Hosanna. <laughs> Praise you, Father. Move in the hearts of your people today. Father, I just pray that, that something that, that you had me share today might just spark something within your believers today that, that will just encourage them even more to just let you move through them. That they might touch those that they come in contact with. And you will move through that. And you get all the honor and the glory for it. Because it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen.